la 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 the inner wealth podcast la 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 the inner wealth podcast la 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 the inner wealth podcast rock and ain't tricks in it you know what day it is in the wealth podcast meditate and give so manifest the greater this and things all good cuz i say it is investing in inner wealth real generational wealth is mental health It's an inside game, no toxicity. Let's talk and more listening. Ladies and gentlemen, and now introducing David McCullough, founder of Inception, the first mental health gym. La 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 la. Inner wealth podcast. La 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 la. Inner wealth podcast. La 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 la. Inner wealth podcast. We're not the matrix to live. All right, everybody, welcome back. To the Inner Wealth Podcast, got a special guest in the building, my boy here, got Ron here. What up, Ron? Bro? What up, though, man? Chilly, chill. So, Ron, you uh, you doing something pretty powerful here? I think so. Yeah, you doing something pretty powerful, which is, you know, I, I heard about um Willie Lynch when I was uh when I was young, and when was the first time you think you heard about that name? The first time I heard the name Willie Lynch would have to have been 1996, 7-ish, 8-ish, whenever mm. Black Star came out. Who was that, Most Deaf? Most Deaf yeah. and Talib, or Yasin Bey and Talib uh, Kweli. Mm -hmm. First time I ever heard the name Willie Lynch was uh, Talib Kweli rapping uh, How to Make a Slave by Willie Lynch is still applying. That was the first time I ever heard his name. Mm -hmm. and actually got conscious of what Willie Lynch was about. Right. So Willie Lynch, and when you heard that, what was the feeling you got about that? So the thing is, like, you know, he the line was kind of like, still though blacks are dying or something like that. You know, we live in a triumph. How to make slave by Willie Lynch is still applying, right? And at the time, I was in college, and um, going back to like high school, I had a shirt that said, now we lynch ourselves. Mm. And so I heard this line, and I'm like, yo, we killing ourselves. Like, you know, it's just like really hit me like that. And who was Willie Lynch? <laughs> right. So uh, I went to the bookstore and then, you know, I'm a broke college student. I don't have no money. You know what I mean? So I used to go to the bookstore and just sit in the bookstore and read books because they mm. it was on a college campus. So they would have it where you could relax and chill. You know, people go there to study. So I found the book, ironically, a um, little thin book, and I just read it. And at the time, I'm, I'm a teenager. I don't really know how to how to use this information but i just mm. to me at that time it was like yo some way and someday in the future you got to fix this right and it's just been with me ever since so since that been with you and now you've gone on to make a a, a movie is it considered a documentary it would be a documentary documentary called die willie die yes when you first sent it to me, I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> die, Willie, die. Then I was like, oh, that Willie Lynch, because I'm, I'm familiar with Willie, Willie Lynch. Now, I do know that, um, and I don't know if you know this or heard this, and I don't know how accurate it is, but that there wasn't, that that was a fictional thing? Yes. That it wasn't a Willie Lynch? Is that accurate or is it? From my understanding, Willie Lynch is a propaganda piece. Mm. Um, from my understanding, it's a propaganda piece to alert black people to the ills of to the ills of uh, a society and what's really happening to make them start changing for themselves. So it's fictional and that Willie Lynch isn't real, but it is factual in the way that slavery approached black people in America. I've done uh, like maybe three episodes now okay. on uh, a topic called uh, the trauma matrix. Um. And when I think about the Matrix and I think about what you're talking about with Willie Lynch yeah. and that whole idea, really what we're talking about is deprogramming. Yes. And deconditioning. Yes. What are some of the ways that we've been programmed as black people? Let's go back because you look like you got some historical context. A little bit. A little bit. So what's some of the historical context and ways we have been programmed? All right. So... Let's think about, um, I like Malcolm X, mm. one of my heroes, right? And Malcolm X talks heavily about the field Negro versus the house Negro, right? And the field Negro works so hard to protect everything that the master owns. 
but he won't protect himself. He won't protect his family. He won't protect his 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 fellow brother or sister that's in the field picking cotton, right? He'll snitch on them. Tell on them in the heartbeat. Oh, look at them doing doing this, master. They trying to they trying to escape, master. They trying to read, master. They educating themselves, master. You can't let them do that, master. You can't get away with that, right? We see that time and time again in today's society, in particularly in our culture. Huge split. You know, we call it classism, right? You got middle class black people, then you got lower class black people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the middle class black people feel like they're so much above. The lower class black people, but in the eyes of society, the master back in the day, you 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 was nigga, you a slave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You a slave. It's the same way today. We just don't realize it. Now we're starting to see it when when people tell you you're gonna lose your job if you don't do this, or you're gonna do this if you don't do that. You thought you had all this control, mm -hmm. but in reality, you don't. You just been programmed to think you better because you got a higher stature, a higher place in society and right. back to the Willie Lynch letter it talks about that you know mm -hmm. separating people uh, from plant you in this plantation so that make you better or you you know you lighter you darker you got colorism you got all these things that go into um, a historical context of how we view each other that goes back to slavery so what it, it created its own class within within a a group of people who are enslaved yes so we've now created our own classism within, yes. in, within our culture because our, our culture at that time was slavery. Yes. Majority majority of it. And we're talking about African Americans because black people in other parts of the world have not experiencing the same right. type of thing. You said a key word though and I was like, hmm. You said snitch. We have this thing now with snitching. Is it's like it's like when we talk about snitching today, it's like there's such a strong emotion around it. Yes. I, ain't, I ain't doing nothing with him. He a snitch. Yes. Is that, here it is with programming, that program, that ain't just what you learn from growing up. No. That's from past. That's from slavery. Yeah. Think about it. You had you had people, the, the field Negro wouldn't let the house Negro know what was going on because they knew they would tell. And when they told what would happen, they're going to get beat. They're going to get hung. You know what I mean? So this this a lot of things that we do in our community are, are is passed down. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like our relationship. You know, we're business people. We deal with all kind of people. Mm -hmm. We're not ignorant to think that all people are one kind of way. Right. All right. However, there is a condition in that. And, and maybe we haven't directly been taught this, but our grandfather or our uncle or somebody has been taught never look at a white woman. Right. Don't look a white man in his eye. Right. Condition it. So then what do you think about all the people that we may know that think white people are bad or they're scared of white people? They only have no relationship with anyone mm. that's Caucasian. Mm. But for some reason, they got a fear about them because somewhere in their conditioning, they've been told that these people can hurt you. So they never look at it like, you know, I have. I've been in the real estate business for years, right? I have people say to me, man, well, you know, you do all this business with these white folks and da, da, da. And I'm like, some of these white folks treat me way better than some of y'all black folks, right? But why is that? Because uh, we think that uh, you're, not, uh, you're not special if you're not on a pedestal, if you haven't arrived at a space. Funny story, I tell you. I reached out to a young lady with a Facebook group. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, we're doing a screening for the movie. We could do something for the group. We can give a group discount, blah, 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 right? She says, you should just give the movie away for free. People need this content. I said, you're right. People do need the content. But let me ask you a question. Would you ask Spike Lee to give his movies away for free? She said, but you're not Spike Lee. I said, he wasn't Spike Lee. And he wouldn't be Spike Lee if he followed the advice of people like you, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And we had to get away from that. You know what I mean? We had this... We think less of ourselves, and, and it's an eternal thing, so then we project it to other people. And that comes back to the programming in the beginning. Yeah, and I have a direct correlation to that, too, just from when I'm out talking and I'm on our platforms and instantly people think, oh, wow, this is amazing what you do, but what about the person who can't afford it? And my question was to the people who said this to me, this is on live radio, I said, why is it that when it comes down to our health and there's no such thing as mental and physical health is it's health. 
and it's connected. But why, when we talk about that, you instantly go and think about all the people who can't afford it. Who are all the people who can't afford it that you even know? What's the number? You can't even give me a number. So you you create, again, here it is, you are self-sabotaging yourself. Yes. Because here it is. Can you afford it? That's what I ask. Can you afford it? Yes. Take care of you. Yes. And the, the chips will fall where they may for everybody else. But you take care of you. Don't worry about, well, they can't do it, but you wouldn't think about that when you went and got that $300,000 house. You didn't think, but but my people can't afford it. Right. But you took care of yourself on that. Right. So why is it that we do that? It's, again, when we look at our programming, like it's connections to all of it. Yes. You know, um, and, and like you said, too, like that whole um, I rem- I worked at a job call center in Florida where, you know, um, this is man, I'm young. I'm in my early 20s and I'm selling like vacation packages to Mexico or something like these. Those old things like, oh, yeah, you won this. Yeah. And there's one guy was on the phone like, man, why are you talking white? <laughs> I was like, bro, first of all, I'm from Detroit. <laughs> I said, I just know how to, I just, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm a, a polyglot. You know what that is? No. Nah, I speak multiple languages. Got you. I speak our language. Now they put Ebonics on it. I ain't necessarily, but, but our culture in Detroit's lang- yes. language is a language. Yes. So it's not, it's not like I'm trying to be one way or the other. Right. I just learn multiple different ways. I've been around many different type of people. Makes sense. Back to the programming though. So what's, what's another one? What's what's another one that we can talk about that that we do that is like man you know that's some that's real colorism s- colorism paper bag test color yes man colorism man is it was sad about colorism is so I got all daughters right mm-hmm. and I'm the only person in my house that got some color <laughs> mm. everybody in my house is like light bright right. Mm-hmm. And uh, my oldest daughter once said to me, you know, she was looking at a picture of a model and she was like very dark, like chocolate glowing skin. I mean, mm-hmm. she was beautiful. She was like, man, I wish my skin was dark like that. And that hurt me. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, yo, why you can't just embrace you? Like black people come in all different shades, shapes, colors, heights. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so it, it was a, it's kind of, it was kind of like a reverse because growing up, you it's know, the opposite. people would be like, oh, you light skin. Just because mm-hmm. you light skin, you, you, you quote unquote fine. You know what I mean? You could mm-hmm. have the worst features on earth, but because you were light skin, you got treated better. Right. <laughs> and I mean, and it's still like that these days. I mean, there are people who I'm sure that just like the name test, you know, somebody applies for a job. If your name is Sarah versus Shaniqua. Shaniqua's resume is going to get put in the trash, right? This this is proven, yeah. <laughs> right? And they're going to look at Sarah again, you know, because Sarah's name is more, uh, it resonates more with the, the main society, right? So it's the same thing with the colorism. You know, you have people that actually still hate themselves. They don't think, you know, sisters out here that don't think they're beautiful because they got dark skin, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's internal. It's not. It's not even to the point. It used to be you were told this, you were shown this, you know what I mean? We didn't used to have dark skin baby dolls and Barbies and all of that. And, you know, now they're doing shapes, you know, where the, mm-hmm. the, they have different shaped people, but we didn't used to have those different differences so you can embrace yourself. Mm-hmm. Now we got all of that. And it's still little girls that are prefer a lighter dial over the darker dial because they have their own insecurity about being dark. I'm curious to how, over the next 10, 20 years, how it's going to be in terms of race, because we're going into spaces where we won't even look like us. Your avatar in the metaverse may be you want to be alien. Exactly. And that's how people know Ron. Ron, the big alien skin. Because people now are, we live in a world where we, we reject self-identity. We want to identify with whatever we want to identify with. Me and my kids had this conversation, and it was like, well, if I want to be called a tree, then people should respect me and call me a tree. And I'm like, but you're not a tree. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You're not a tree. Like, at, at some point, you have to, you know, for us, and this is important for black people, right? This is not to knock any other culture. But for black people, particularly black people in America, we have to pull back a little bit. 
Like we have to grow closer and have a little more pride in our own history. And because we've been raped of it, we don't know everything. We don't know where we're from. We don't know our language. We have to start creating spaces that's unique to us having that power. And it's not about power to, uh, to discriminate against other people, but it's about power to strengthen and lift us up because other people are not going to lift us up. They're not going to create uh, equal playing fields for us. We have to do that for ourselves. And if we don't unite in some form or fashion, whether politically, economically, communal, like in our communities, we're going to fall, we're going to continue to fall by the wayside. In that statement, you said you're not asking us to do anything that other cultures are not doing. Of right. course, they all have their stuff, but they have some basic foundational stuff too that we um, we didn't necessarily get collectively. We got in pockets, but every time we tried to do it, it was kind of like um, sabotaged in a way. Exactly. You know, you're talking about something like Black Wall Street. Black Panthers. Yeah. Martin like Luther we, King. We were, we were, you know, so that that's, it's not like, you know, I, I, I always look at where we are now as, you know, our culture. And I've thought about this when I was young. I'm like, where's, where's the Martin Luther Kings? Where's the Malcolm X's? Where is where is the leaders? Because every one of our leaders who we've been trying to prop up as leaders will 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 destroy them, or they'll destroy them. Farrakhan. To me, that's still one of the prominent black leaders that we've ever seen. Indeed, doesn't matter if you don't agree with what he says all the way. Right. Don't matter if you don't agree with the lifestyle all the way. And I think to me again, I've said this on another show. I think. I think the nation, because it's religion included into it, that's where we kind of like messed up where it didn't, well, I want to say messed up, but that's where it became so inclusive. Like you got to convert to something versus right. like the principles that they're applying self-development. I got into self-development at a year, early age and I got into it from a white guy. Yeah. I got into it from Anthony Robbins. There you go. Not really. That just gave me further awareness about other things that were possible right. that I po probably couldn't get from the black culture. Right. But that was there. Like you said, sixth grade, I went to see Malcolm X because our school took us. Yeah. They took us to see Malcolm X in sixth grade. Yeah. We were already, I already had that black power. I already saw that. I already saw Malcolm X go through his transformation as a sixth grader. What grade were you in when you saw that? Ninth grade. Saw that You're in ninth the, grade. Saw that at the Renaissance Center. Okay. I read the autobiography of Malcolm X when I was in sixth grade. That's when I, I was familiar with the book. Mm. And then uh, ninth grade, we went on a field trip. Mm. We walked, because I went to Cass, and we walked to the Renaissance Center. This when they had a theater in there, and we watched Malcolm X. What middle school did you go to? I went to uh, I went to Catholic school, the middle, middle school. It was uh, called St. Gerard, okay. West Side, Detroit, right next to Henry Ford. And um, the... The impact of somebody like Malcolm X, you know, we associate Malcolm X, again, like you said, with the nation of Islam. But if you follow Malcolm X in his path, he was expanding. He was growing. I believe that's what made him a threat, you know, for them because it was breaking out of their norms. And I think prim primarily with this film, Die Will He Die, one of the things I tried to do was was to show black people that we we are stronger together, no matter what your faith is. Mm -hmm. You can believe in Jesus. You could believe in in um, in doo doo if you want to. I don't care what you believe in, but understand that collectively we are still one people, and you should have the freedom to worship what you what you know worship your faith. You should have the freedom to do that. I don't want to change that. I'm not trying to convert you to anything, right? But I do want you to think for yourself and start to analyze what you've been taught, because there are certain things we've been taught in our faith. That may not be accurate. That may not be true. And it may be hindering you from reaching your highest self. You know what I mean? And we got to start, you know, like encouraging people to think. Man, we, we refuse to think. We'll believe in something that's like pie in the sky. No proof, no evidence or anything. And then we'll see something that has 1,000% proof, but because of cognitive, cognitive dissonance, We'll ignore it because it doesn't make us feel good. 
right? You know, this this guy is beating, hey, little sister, this guy beating you every day, but he loves me. He, he told me he loved me. He bought me this coat. Yeah, he gave you a black eye too. When are you going to accept that people that love you don't give you black eyes? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like we, and, and as black people, that's how we live, right? It's, it's like that with our politics. You know, we worship right. certain uh, political figures or, or parties and think, oh, this is going to happen for us because they're for the black people. They're not for the black people. If you're not, if you, you're not black if you don't vote for me. This person is was a biggest advocate for putting you in jail. Like, I mean, it's just we and we fall for the okie doke over and over and over and over again. And my thing is, you know, with die will he die is to get you to the point, like you said, to deprogram yourself. Program yourself. You have the power to do it, right? Like you do it. Don't let other people do it. You can take in the information. Evaluate the information, then you decide to use the information that in a way that best fits you. And that's all we're trying to get people to do at this point is just wake up. Just wake and up. That's the main message. So let's break down what you just said in terms of two. Um, everything you just said just comes down to this one thing. And here's the programming. We've always been waiting for a savior. Yep. Oh, Obama. I don't feel like nothing changed. You yeah. something changed to you? No, it, I'm not not financially. It got worse for me, but I, I'm not knocking Obama. I had this conversation with my mom, and I and it was a very honest conversation. I said, "In your entire life, name me a president that did something that drastically altered the landscape of your life." She couldn't name one. No, because it hadn't happened. Because everything that that that's taking place in your life came from an intention yes to change your life yes nobody came and saved you nope you had to take an intention there's help along the way absolutely for sure but the help don't come until you have the attention unless you're moving along the way exactly and our religion that's why you when you said that i was like yeah i don't care what people's religions are i only care about when it's disempowering you yes and it's a lot of that happening Jesus to me, don't matter if he's real or, or not. My thing is, I've been in that world. I lived in that church world, and I did a whole episode on that. If you're not walking in your power and doing greater than the least amongst you, as Jesus said, he said, even at least amongst you can do greater than him, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're not walking in that power, I don't care what you tell me about who you are, what you believe in. I don't see no power. Exactly. And I don't see no fruit. Exactly. So that's how I look at people. But I take those principles from the Bible. Yes. And you can take those principles going to the Quran. I guarantee you they're there. They are. Go, go into the, the back of a Gita. I guarantee you they're there. They are. Go into the book of the dead. I guarantee you they're there. Yes. But we still worrying about, well, whose book is right? Yeah. It's, it's the most narcissistic. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's, it's people out here that don't follow any of those things, but follow all the principles and have all the success. Because my bishop, now one thing he told me, it was he was the coolest dude. He is the coolest dude. And I don't even, I'm not even connected to him anymore. White guy. He said, taught, taught me, buddy, this is about principles. The laws of the universe and the principles, they work for everybody. Mm -hmm. The drug dealer, mm -hmm. the crime boss, mm -hmm. the killer, the narcissist. Mm -hmm. If you apply that principle and you have a belief surrounding that principle, mm -hmm. it works for you. This mm -hmm. is what it is. It's facts. This is what it is. I've never seen somebody fail who was a giver in my life. I've never seen that person fail. I've seen that person on hard times. I've never seen that person fail. But you never saw the person who failed who was a giver who gave out of the pure intention who's not in a codependent exactly. level of giving. Because those I are mean. two different things, that, right? But that's what I mean. When I say yeah. a giver, I'm just talking about that personality. I want to change that for people because yeah. people, some people are givers because in, in they they're, they're in a codependent relationship. And they think that by pouring themselves out to this person and letting that vampire drain them. Yeah. And this is people who parents who allow this to, for their kids to do that to them. Yeah. Or kids who allow their parents to do that to them and yeah. they create these unhealthy attachments and it all goes back down to programming again, right? Yeah. And you got to be interdependent. That's what we have to move you, to. You got to be. So break that down for for the people. What is, it, what is the difference between independence and interdependence? So a lot of people 
it's particularly, and this is another issue in our community, right? There's another divide, right? You know, the the relationship between a male and a female, right? And going back to Willie Lynch, mm. the idea in, in slavery was separate the man and the woman, separate the woman from the man, make her feel have to feel strong on her own to have to fend for her family on her own, fend for her children on her own, make decisions on her own. But that leaves her on an island. She's she's only half complete, right? I mean, she's full. She's fully woman. But as a family, she's only half complete, right? She's not as strong as she would be if she was with her man, right? And the man was able to be a man and do all the things that men are meant to do. And I'm not talking about societal roles of, of gender. Take out the garbage. Yeah. 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 I'm talking about mm. just the nature of man and the nature of woman. There are certain gifts that women have that men just don't have. And there's certain gifts that men have that women just don't have, right? We can operate independently. I can cook my own food. You know what I mean? My wife can can probably fix her own tire. <laughs> you know what I mean? But imagine what happens when we come together and we come together with purpose and we come together with a plan, how much further we can go than if we were separate, right? So when we talk about independent versus interdependence, interdependence is I'm bringing my whole thing to the table. You bringing your whole thing to the table and we making those two things form like like uh, Voltron, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. to to take over the galaxy, to save the world, whatever we're doing with it, but we're working together instead of being strong independently but being incomplete, you yeah. know what I mean? There was a, um, there's a wasp nest at Inception, and this was this was a couple summers ago, and I remember I called the building and was like, hey, you know, the landlord, like, we got a wasp nest, and, and then actually you know, I saw one of the guys who the attendants come over with a broom. He knocked it down onto the grass. I was like, damn, that was that was easy, right? Wasp's gone. Okay, cool. Come back two days later. Same wasp. Well, I don't know if it's the same wasp. I was like, I ain't talked to him. <laughs> Went to the same exact spot. Yeah. The same exact spot started building again. And by that time, two, three days later, it was almost back to back where it was. Normal. Yeah. Hey, call him up. Wasp nest, they come, knocked it back down. Then, maybe three, four months later, I look out in the front window. We got these trees out in the front window, and I see this huge ass wasp's nest. <laughs> huge. Way bigger than it was before. Right. Super small before. It wasn't fully formed, but this one was huge and it was hidden. Yeah. The wasp, they didn't go in fight each other what you doing why you let him smash our stuff right. they ain't cry we want our reparations because they they destroyed our stuff mm-hmm. they went back tried again that didn't work what was the next step adaptation yes i gotta adapt gotta grow. i can't do the same things okay that's how you want to do it i'm gonna do it bigger and i'm gonna hide it where you can't even see it yep that time around we ain't even want to mess with it it got so big yeah and from that point, then then winter came and it just Died. then we, but but nature did what it's gonna do. Yes, that's how black people. That's how that's how we have to do it. Don't matter who caused us the trauma. Right. That don't matter. Absolutely. We got to keep going, you and gotta we got to keep it. adapting. Got to adapt. And one of our biggest adaptations that we have not done is we not have not adapted to understand that we got to heal. Exactly. We have not collectively healed from our past. We move forward, and we've adapted some, but we haven't collectively healed. But that, that even go back to the individual. The individual, and that's that's why this film is important, because the goal is so. Back to the whole desire and passion to solve the problem for Willie Lynch. Willie Lynch been with me for twenty years, right? I hadn't figured it out. Till I had a kid. And then I realized that the way that Willie, the, the idea of Willie Lynch or the programming that, that Willie Lynch boasts, it was generational. It wasn't, Ryan, go convince Dave, and let's just assume, let's say you, you a house slave and I'm a field slave. The programmer wasn't go convince Dave, the house slave, to, to escape with you 
because he a house no he's that's not gonna work dave is cool he like i eat every day i'm, I'm you know what i mean like i'm warm y'all cold outside i'm not i'm not changing right but the change would come from the mother primarily because the mother is the first to have that relationship with the child right so if you have a loving mother that's encouraging their child to be a loving child, then nine times out of ten, the child is going to grow up be a loving child, right? If you have a, a a loving mother and a loving father in the household and a father that shows love to his wife, that daughter, if they have a daughter, is going to expect a certain thing from a man mm -hmm. because she saw a certain thing growing up, right? So then I realized that the programming has to happen generationally. And I follow this thing, build a home, teach a class, start a revolution. Build a home means start with you. You're the home. You're the, the temple of God, as we refer to, right? So start with you. Recognize what you need to change. Demonstrate that change in your house. And your house could be you, your wife, and your daughter. Your house could be you and your, your friends that you live, whatever the case may be. But in the space that you're in, be the change that you you say you want to see, right? And then being the change, people observe. Black people are such an uh, um, observationist type culture. Like we're watching, well, what are they wearing? Oh, we're going to wear that. What are they doing? We're going to do it. Oh, if I got uh, $100,000 worth of jewels on, I'm special. Let me go get some fake chains so I can look like. So we're always watching, right? What if more of us watch men and women come together and work together to be strong families and take care of their kids and, and dads be involved with their kids, which is grossly under marketed, right? This underrepresented brother. I would I, think that the way that they put that out there, I would, I'm, I, I almost feel it bad for having a, a good mother and father, bro. But it's, the thing is, I was telling one of my homeboys the other day, I said, when I was a kid, all my friends had fathers. Mine too. I didn't. But I was the minority. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the majority. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? As it, but the marketing says the black men wasn't at home. Okay, stop there for a second. Let's go back to that. You didn't have the dad, but your friends did. So you still observe what was the better way of doing it. Bro, listen. Right? Yes. So you got a contrast. You may not be able to experience what your friends experienced. Yes. But you got enough contrast to know that my kids ain't going to experience this, my right? My kids are not going to go through Because it's almost like through. you you get made fun of if your dad's not present. Yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird if, situation. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, the thing is, as I'm, learning, uh, as I'm learning about the psychology of the mind, a lot of times you either, you either going to, like, become the programming or you're going to drastically resist the programming. You're going to do one of the two, right? Mm. And so, like, for me... My father was around sometimes, mm -hmm. right? When my dad was around, it was a great time. When my dad wasn't around, I'm like, dang, like, why well, my dad ain't around? You know what I'm saying? I, mm -hmm. I couldn't really understand it, but my father had, you know, other issues as a kid that you're just not aware of. Like, I didn't know, you know, with drugs and all that stuff. When you're little, nobody's telling you your father's battling with an addiction. You don't get that till you get a little older. And it's like, all right. And I never had animosity mm -hmm. about my father. When he was around, he gave me all kind of wisdom and stuff. But- you know, I'm my wife, my mother remarried. My stepfather was a was a he was around since I was little because my father was gone. You know what I mean? But he um he was a cop and he was stern. Mm -hmm. And my older brother got murdered. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then my other brother, a little older than me, that I followed around. He was kind of in the streets. And as you could see, as more stuff revealed with them, he became more of a tyrant with me. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because he didn't know. He wasn't healed. It's growing up, you know what I mean, getting beat on whenever you do something wrong because he grew up in that old old school life, yeah. you know, spare the, spare the rod, mm -hmm. spoil the child, that type of thing. So he looked at it like, well, maybe I was too cool with the other kids. I mm -hmm. let them do whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So then he was like overboard on me. I never, We never had a father-son conversation until I was grown and had a kid. So my education about being a man Came from rap songs, athletes, my my older brother and his friends in the street who I followed around and wanted to be. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, Michael Jordan saved my life. They be like, how Michael Jordan saved your life? I said, because my brother 
who I idolized. This, I mean, my brother might as well have been my father. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Got shot when I was 12. Got shot in his neck. Mm. Sorry and, to hear that, man. And he's alive. He's Thank alive. God. Okay. Yeah, no, he's alive. All, right. All is well with him. Still. <laughs> but that's... yeah, but it was. You a, saw it? I saw. I didn't see him actually get shot. Like, okay. I didn't see the trigger get pulled. But I was immediately there at the hospital. But you remember him. the experience? Oh, it was scary. Yeah. One of the scariest nights of my life, right, mm-hmm. as a child. So, up to that point, I wanted to be a gangster because he was a gangster. Mm-hmm. His friends was gangsters. They was the scariest people. We was almost like a gang, you know what I mean? And, and without saying it was a gang, I didn't. I look back and I'm like, yo, this was a gang, you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. I, then I'm just in my neighborhood. You represent your neighborhood. Somebody come over here. Y'all got to scrap, whatever. It, it was just like that, right? Seeing my brother get shot made me say, oh, I got to do something different. And I played basketball, and I heard and I heard Michael Jordan's story of getting cut, mm. and I wasn't that good. And I was like, "Yo, if he got cut and he became this, what if I did everything he did? What could I become?" Next two years changed my life. Like just watching and studying what he did, basketball saved me, man. I'd have been a whole different person. And you observe, you know, young younger age when you see somebody fail and you see them so great, and you heard that they failed, you're like, wait, what? It's like a paradigm shift. Yep. I tell people all the time, like, yo, in business, like, I failed a lot. Like, you know how many business ventures I've done? What? Like, you what? Know, you know how many business ventures I've done what? since I was probably <laughs> 13 years old? Like, I've, I've, I've failed a lot, and, man, that's just part of the journey. And people are afraid. That'll go back to programming. You, afraid to fail. People, school teaches you that failure is bad. And then we're conditioned with each other because if the teacher asks a question, you don't want to raise your hand unless you know 100% you're that right. question is right, that you're right. Because right. If, if, if it's not, then what happens? <laughs> I made a, I made a fun yeah. of. So then you're conditioning me to not try, Yep, Make, to not take the shot. I'm afraid to take the risk. But you can't be successful. You can't be right here right now where you are without taking the risk. And that's one thing, you know, back to the programming. My mother was so afraid for me, bro. You know what I mean? It was like, go to school. I got to get you out the city. Like, go to school, mm. get a degree, get a job. Life would be great. You know what I'm saying? But that wasn't a life for me. It never was a life for me. I never wanted it. You know what I mean? It was like, I never wanted that life. I teach my kids something so drastically different. <laughs> you know mm. what I mean? And that's the Willie Lynch. That's the it's, real You're more calm down, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm like, yo, listen. I started watching my kids when they were babies to naturally see what they're gifted at. What do they pay attention to? What do they do? Okay, how can we, what can we put you in that let you explore that more or shows your gift or your strength, right? I encourage my kids, follow your, whatever you think you do better than everybody else, figure out how to do that and get paid for it. You know what I mean? Don't be afraid. I got your back. Long as you showing me you working, I got your back. You could, you could fail at it for 10 years. Don't matter. I'm going to find a way to make sure you straight. But be dedicated to that thing and don't be afraid to fail because you can't grow without the failure. Like you have to. It's like riding a bike, man. You're going to ride the bike. You're going to fall. What happens when you fall and you skin your knee and you're scared to get back on the bike? You're never going to learn how to ride the bike. Mm -hmm. So in business and in life, you have to take the risk. And you have to you have to be okay when when things don't go right because I think that's another when you talk about health, and I'm I'm just gonna I know I'm gonna break it more into mental health particularly because uh, with a lot of people right now are struggling with suicide and all this type of stuff. We life is high and low, it's always high and low. Nobody's life is all the way high, and nobody's life is all the way low, right? But what happens is sometimes we get so high up. We embrace that high and we believe that that's how it's supposed to always be. And the minute that is not that and we crash and we burn and we can't handle it and we can't take it, it's too much pressure. And then you, you start seeing people going these deep depressions and then you see the young lady who we thought had it all jump out the building. Mm-hmm. Right. We have to learn that. When you are low, that's the time to recalibrate. We're going to be high. All right. I enjoyed it. I know low is coming at some point in time. When it comes, let me be aware that it's coming. So that when it comes, I'm prepared to deal with it so that I can get back up high. You know what I mean? 
it's all about preparation, and we we got to get back to that. We or get to that play. I can't even say get back to. We, we we're disconnected to that from nature. Yes, nature does that. Nature has right now. It's snowing outside, bro. It's we winter. came through here in a blizzard. Exactly. Right. Right. We still here. Mm-hmm. In the wintertime, people complain in Michigan. Oh, it's like we all know. We've <laughs> all read the meme. We're all, well, how many times are you gonna complain? Right. You live here. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. If summer decides to say, you know what? Let's just take over. We're going to stay like this for the rest of the year. The earth would burn up, bro. Facts. Think if you stayed excited. Think if you stayed in a state of excitement or happiness. You have a heart attack. Yes. Your heart will burn out. Yes. It's time to rest. Yes. When winter, fall comes around, it's telling you to slow down. But we want to still try to go, go, go. It's go, like go, so go, go, backwards. Go, go. Go. Again, so it's, it's like our nervous systems. If you look at our nervous system, you look at our brain pattern, if you look at our heart pattern yeah it goes up and down that is what it is mm-hmm. and like you said now we're in a in the stock market <clears throat> we're in a bear market right mm-hmm. like look at all these terms we use mm-hmm. to describe the experience but then you get on social media and everybody's life is up all the time no it can't be that <laughs> that <laughs> can't be that i'm winning look at all this money i'm getting yeah all the time with business owners I don't look at any business owner and um, envy because you know why? Because I ain't looked at your books. Exactly. Because when you know, if you ever looked at somebody's books, you're like, damn, you made five million but you in sales, six. <laughs> but you took home 20 grand. Yes, sir. D- you know, this is we, we're trying to like make it seem like like failure is not a not a part of the equation. It's it's the craziest thing. <laughs> it is. And now we talk about the programming of it. Just look how detrimental it is because you are programmed. Yep. I can't let nobody know that I didn't make any money because then, I'll, oh, my God, I'm, I'm not worthy or if I don't have this car. I'm not this. If I don't have this watch, I'm not. I can't. I have to show people. The craziest thing to me is people show that they're getting money. Like, I know you're not getting money when I see you trying to show me that you're getting money. Every... I saw a girl post her check on Instagram. Wow. And I was like, all right, now you either doing this for one or two things. If you're trying to sell a course, you know what I mean? So you're trying to have some social proof. Mm. The other side of it is your insecurities or whatever the case made you say, I got to prove to you that I'm worthy. So let me show you I'm worthy by showing you this money I got because you think money makes you worthy. Money's just a thing. It's just a piece of paper. It's a concept, a construct. It's, it's a concept. I mean, take, you know, I tease my kids and I say, you know, my daughter was talking about a bus in Korea or something like that. She's like, they have charging stations in the bus and you can just charge your phone and it has a big map on the app and it tells you where the bus is. And I said, we had a map, told us where the bus was supposed to be and what time it was supposed to be, <laughs> be there, right? And, uh, Sometimes the bus ain't show up, and sometimes you had to walk, and it was cold because she. I was taking her to school. She didn't have no hat, no gloves. I said, where are your hat and the gloves at? Well, I mean, I don't need it. That hat and the gloves. I ain't going to be outside like that. I said, well, what happens if they close the school? You got to go outside, and I can't get to you. You're going to be cold. I said, y'all don't know how to survive. And we got to get back to, you know, we joke about the white guys and they militias and they be training and all mm-hmm. that. We joke about that. Aha, uh-huh, they's crazy. They think the end of the world come, whatever the case may be. But in the event of a real zombie apocalypse, we going to get ate up. The other thing is why, why, why does it even have to be event? We should just be smart enough to take care of ourselves at all times. At all times. Again, it's not it's not about the the trauma, some traumatic event, or we need to, you know, again, like that's the problem with our culture. We need to push back. Like we we don't need to push back against nobody. No, we just need to take care of ourselves. Everything that eternal. itself is a pushback. Yes, you focusing again. On you. Them wasps didn't leave no note. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't knock on the door. They didn't do no marching. Nope. They said, pick your shit back up and go get some new materials and go over here. Yep. And that's what they did. Yep. And it was just that simple. And to me, it's just that simple and cut and dry. I know we try to put other elements in it. Like, yeah. but what about this person? They don't got that money. And they don't, again, all these, all these hypotheticals and these what ifs, 
Like my school teacher used to tell me, what if grandma had a grand uh, had a uh, mustache? Would she be grandpa? <laughs> the what if don't change don't anything. Matter. Right. So all I can do is do the best I can with what I got and what I know and keep adapting and growing, you know? Yeah. We talked about um, the programming a little earlier. Um, and I know you're a Star Wars guy. Yeah. And if you start looking at that, that's in that message is in that movie. Yeah. You know? Like you remember on uh, Empire Strikes Back when Yoda and uh, Luke were in the, uh, the swamp. swamp land, yeah, and and Luke was trying to raise the, the spaceship. Yeah, I'll he said him. this is it's too big, it's impossible. Yeah, and Yoda was like, "Man, hold my cane." Pulls this thing out the water, <laughs> small little self lifts it up, puts it down. He said, "I can't believe it." He said, "That's why, why you, you fail. fail." Yep. Why we fail collectively. It's, again, we we doing things, it's mm -hmm. not we, but collectively, we don't believe because we don't believe in ourselves. We don't, we don't have that's that's the that's what I got from my mom and dad more so than anything. Yeah, is one thing. It's a can do spirit. Yes, adaptability. Like yeah, okay. Uh, it's snowing outside. Oh, uh, we we still got to get there. Okay, exactly. I'm. You got to figure stuff out, and you got to be. You have to be proactive versus reactive. Yes. We are reactive very, as a culture. Very reactive as a culture. And if we and the crazy thing about it is we got all the power, but we don't realize it. That's the craziest part to me is that everybody in the world wants what we have. My daughter told me, and I didn't know this, and I'm I'm thinking I'm pretty smart. Do you know they used to eat African people? Because they thought they can extract their magic power or whatever they thought they had. They used to eat, like cannibals would try to eat African people to get. I, I don't doubt that. I mean, they're taking our blood at this point. You hear whispers again of things. But that's just, Take our organs. They want the melanin. Henrietta Lacks. I mean, all that. That's just crazy to me that you, you hear these things and you know these things are happening, right? You see people emulate mm -hmm. everything that you do. Mm-hmm. But you don't embrace it. Like one thing I do, I, I'm, I'm happy to start seeing, and I'm seeing a lot of it. Um, I don't think it's the, the actual solution per se. It's part of it. But I'm seeing a lot of, of black people care more about their finances. And, yes. and I'm very happy to see that because people are starting to think about it. I just want to challenge us as a people, though, to go back to the bare necessities. I, I got a um, – sometimes people might see me wear – I got a brand, Triple Dub OG, right? And – uh. The W stand for wealth, wellness, and wisdom. Mm. I want to encourage people, man, to focus on your on your wellness because, and of course, become more wise, but you can't, having things and money and all of that means nothing if you're not healthy and, and you can't enjoy it, you know what I mean? And you can't use it for a purpose because mm. you could die with all the money in the world, man. Steve Jobs. You know, what is it? What did mm -hmm. you what did you do? What did what, what really changed? How your kids feel about you? What mm -hmm. legacy did you leave? You know what I mean? What what did you do? You know, we always think I gotta have money to do something important. But how about this? It's a kid you know who dad ain't around. How about you invite that kid over to your house for dinner? How about you take that kid to a ball game with your kids? Let him see some other things, some other parts of life so that he can have some inspiration. You know what I mean? May cost you a couple bucks, may cost you nothing to have a kid over for dinner, mm -hmm. right? But that investment right there is, is, is a huge investment in society, in our culture, in our community. We travel, I used to go 30 minutes away to go to church, right? But why gotta drive 30 minutes away to go to church? All these people in my neighborhood, how many people actually know more than two of their neighbors these days? Versus when we grew up, you walked down the street and you did something you shouldn't have did. By the time you got back down to your house. You knew about it. They knew your, about your it. Your mama already yeah. knew what happened. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That that alone, black people have been, we've been struggling as a group, right? But at least at one point in time, we used to struggle together. And now we struggle in isolation. Well, that's back to the, the, the uh, Willie Lynch, you know, when you start how they broke us down. Um, you start to create dissension. Um, you start to create distrust. Distrust alone <sighs> creates lack of safety. Yes. So when we talk about mental health issues, let's talk about this first. Yeah. The one foundational issue in mental health 
is lack of safety. Yes. That's it. Yes. And then from the lack of safety, here's the domino effects. From lack of safety, the brain has to say, but I need to protect myself Mm -hmm. because the brain don't care about nothing else but survival. Right. I need to protect myself. So now let me go into fight or flight. Let me go into freeze response. Now let me go into fawn response. They got another term. So they're coming up with all these terms of all the gears of the nervous system to go into survival mode. Yeah. So now you stay stuck in survival mode because the environment, that lack of safety, whether you grew up in the hood, whether you went to school and you didn't want to raise your hand because you're going to be Mm -hmm. made fun of, still lack of safety. Mm -hmm. Whether you had that teacher that you didn't really like because what you didn't feel safe Mm -hmm. and then you get into this relationship with this man or this woman who you don't really feel safe. Mm -hmm. But really you attracted that person just to try to resolve the wounds from the lack of safety you didn't get from your parents. Mm -hmm. And now you're in this cycle over and over and over to the point where lack of safety is not even your concern. You you enjoy you're being conditioned to enjoy the cortisol uh, drink cocktail that you're drinking, Mm -hmm. the adrenaline cocktail that you're drinking. Mm -hmm. And so when you start to, you meet someone who actually is safe in that piece, ah, nah, you, uh, you caused the problem. There's no spark between us. Yep. And you're right. Yep. There is no spark because I'm not the one to bring you more lack of safety. I'm Mm -hmm. the one to be safe Mm -hmm. and safe is boring to you because you've been addicted to your, up and down. Your pattern of yeah. survival. It's not toxicity. Right. It's just survival. Yeah. And the thing about programming, let's go back into what you said about, you said you figured it out. It was generational. Yeah. Go into the Bible. How long did they uh, wander around? Like 400 did, years. <laughs> right? Yeah. They realized it was going to be the new generation. Here it is. I think what you're trying to do and what I'm trying to do is like this, like, okay, but what about the ones who are already here? Because, yeah, it's easier to create a new generation because they got a clean slate. Yeah. Clean slate. And it's easier to create something new than to go in and take somebody's stuff, break it down and try to, you know. Yeah. Like, let me just start the, the thing from, 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 scratch. from scratch. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. Deprogramming, what we call mental health work, because that's all that really is. Deprogramming, coming to safety, reprogramming. That is a mother. Yeah. That is difficult. Yeah. And I salute anybody who's on their process of doing it. It is not easy. Don't give up. But man, it is so worth it when you can find safety back in your own temple. Yes. And you now know when danger comes to fight that danger. Mm -hmm. But when that danger is over, you got to discharge that out your body and you got to go right back into safety and you got to go like the wasps and keep building. Keep building. And stop worrying about what they did, what they said. This is a tough pill to swallow. Bro, we just lost. We were taken. Mm -hmm. We lost our ability to control our environment. Mm -hmm. We lost. Mm -hmm. Nothing we can do about that. Right. What we do from here on out. Got to build. Got to build. But the first place we build ain't no outside stuff. It's inside. You got to, you know, we got to, we just got to, like you said, man. I like I like the idea. Uh, it's a clip in the movie, and uh, of course you're in the movie, and it's a clip in the movie. And you say, uh, I think you say, you got to do your own work first, right? <laughs> and it was like, and none of, and the thing is, you're doing a documentary. It's not scripted, right? So I don't know what anybody's gonna say, mm-hmm. but it, it's is when you know you are lying when you hear people saying things that you believe. Mm-hmm. And that you, you know, you promote. And you're like, yo, like when you said that, it just solidified my thought of build a home, teach a class, start a revolution. Because you start with yourself and then you teach other people what you did. And if they do what you did, then that starts the revolution, right? And when you talk about deprogramming, yeah. The fact of the matter is you're going to watch this movie and if you've been so deeply programmed that you don't want to change, you're not. No big deal. But if you're that person that's on the journey already, this is going to give you some encouragement to keep going. And if you keep going, the freedom that you have is, is going to be life changing because it's not it's going to be life changing for you and it'll be life changing for those around you as they can see that example. People will people are watching you, whether they say it or not. People are watching you and you inspire more people than you know you inspire by the things that you do. Anything that you do, like 
the I would go to say to, to somebody out there right now who is trying to do something, make something happen, feel like they don't have support or whatever, that, you know, it's somebody that's inspired by you just doing. They're not going to tell you, but they see you doing and they're so afraid to do. They're inspired by the fact that you got up and did. Yeah. So just keep doing, you know what I mean? Just keep growing. We just got to keep growing. We got to keep focusing on ourselves first. You know, we got to stop. Like you said, we can't what, what, you go back to the Bible. Oh, you take the, uh, what do they say? Don't pluck the whatever out of his eye. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, the splinter. Uh, the splinter is. I get it Look out of your the, eye the first. The speck of dust. He didn't, even say the, yeah. he didn't even say the splinter in your eye. He said, the speck of dust that you're looking at in mine, you need to take the splinter out of yours. Yeah, you know what like, I'm saying? It's, it's like, so big, you know? Yeah, do you first. Yeah. You know what I mean? Focus on you. Stop worrying about them, what this person should do, shouldn't do, can't do, ain't do, why they do this. Don't even Don't even allow that to control how you feel because we give up so much power. I never, I don't let my kids, my kids are not allowed to say she hurt my feelings. It's not even allowed in my house. Mm. They're your feelings. You choose to be hurt or you choose not to be hurt, but nobody can hurt your feelings. Can somebody offend you? Yeah, they can offend you, but you could choose to hold on to that and embrace it. Mm -hmm. I could have chose to be upset that the girl told me, but you ain't Spike Lee, <laughs> right? Or I could embrace that and say, you know what? This put a battery in my back. You know what I mean? Now I'm about to go even harder. You know what I mean? Because it's all energy, bro. Yeah. So whatever energy you give to me, whatever I do with that or not do with it is all on me. It's your choice. Cause and it's not. It's again. It's not. We're not trying to make victims, and that's that's the problem with our culture. We yeah. we're stuck in a victim mindset. Yeah. And when we hear that or we heard certain things like pull yourself up from your own bootstrap and then that's associated with the black Republican who's like kind of selling us out. All these you can yeah. map out all these little things like they that that you've seen. Yeah. That I've seen. It's maybe different now because I'm older and I don't know what the new stuff is. But you've heard that. But there's truth. We do have to pull our own selves up. Got to. Because who else going to do it? Nobody. This one guy came to me. He said, "Man, if it's meant to be, it's up to me." Because, because what happened was, I um I was supposed to be building a business with him, like an inception, and he went off and did some other stuff, and I went and did something with somebody else. He came back, and I was like, "I got a whole nother thing built over here." He was like, "Damn, man, you doing it?" I, he said, "If it's meant to be, it's up to me." Because yep. I couldn't wait on him. He right. was gonna be an investor. I can't wait on you. Right. That's the thing. That's the that's the inner call. The tagline for Inception is inner fitness for seekers. Yeah. Because you said something about something I said. It resonated. That word. Use that word. Yeah. It resonated. Yeah. When you listen to a song, you only listen to it because you resonate with it. Vibrations. If you don't resonate with it, you turn that shit off. Yeah. That's what you're going to say. What's, what is that mess? Yeah. Unless you keep it on and it's like a tuning fork. And and slowly, <laughs> slowly, you start to resonate with something that you didn't resonate yep. with. Yeah, that's the programming. Our people like I love hip hop, and let's let's talk about this for a minute because this is a part of it too. Yeah, and I want I'm gonna tell my thoughts, and I want you to tell me yours. Okay, we we heard the worst of the worst, bro. Growing up, yes. come on now. I agree. There was an Onyx song that I remember. And I, I feel bad even trying to repeat it, so I won't. Right. But it's like, yo, he's sucking this dude, da-da-da. It's raunchy, raw. I'm listening to that. Yeah. I'm listening to NWA. Yeah. I'm listening to some stuff. We've listened to some stuff that, man, if we if we just sat here and played some stuff that we listened to, I think we'd probably be kind of like cringing and embarrassed. Like, but at the same time, yo, it was dope. It was amazing. Yeah. Right? The difference is I grew up with two parent household and I listened to that song maybe a few times in my life. You can get away with watching shows with murder and violence and all these things. You can't do that when underneath the surface you've been programmed like the Manchurian candidate. Mother wasn't there, father wasn't there, lack of safety lack of safety in a home poor programming in a home and then here comes hip-hop mm -hmm. then here comes 
the you've seen Manchurian Candidate with Denzel Washington back in the day with how what happened and that, movie, it was a movie before that. that basically he was a soldier mm -hmm. and they programmed and he was like a super soldier go take people out kind of gotcha. like born type of thing yeah, yeah. but they had a way to like activate you yeah to get you going right to go do what you need to do like the winter soldier like the win exactly like the winter soldier yeah. words he would say your first middle and last name would activate you yeah that's the music it so, is. so the music by itself so i'm not gonna be mad at the rappers right yeah it's some garbage out there it is i'm not just some old head hating no it's some garbage it's some garbage for sure because it's way worse mm -hmm. the pro but i ain't worried about you i'm worried about the ones who resonate with it yeah because i can't you put that out there we can't be mad about stuff we like and we go buy. I'm not mad at you for putting it out. I'm mad at you for going to buy it. Right. Because if you. So what do you think? So that's, that's a, uh, it's a deep dive because I actually, I'm a musician. And I put out some of the worst music you could ever hear content wise. Mm. I, funny, uh, I was going to include some of it in the movie to kind of show the contrast. I didn't do it. My daughter's like, I want to hear the song. I'm like, no, I'll never let you hear this song. You mean from the contrast to where you were to where you are now? Yeah, okay. yeah. I'll, I'll never let you hear this song. Like, mm. I'm embarrassed. I got songs that I'm like, I can't believe I said this mm. out of my mouth. And the crazy part about it is, I'm the, type, I'm the type of person that if I said it, I meant it. You know what I mean? Right. I wasn't this new music thing is different. You weren't just sitting there writing up lyrics. No, I was out here. I was out here. You know what I mean? Mm. So if I rapped about stuff, I mean, not I, Pookie gets shot. I ain't doing that. I ain't telling you who got <laughs> shot. But if I say somebody got shot, they probably really got shot. You, mm. you know what I'm saying? But the music is deep because it's like for you and for me, like I said, we listen to some of the worst lyrics ever. But we also got some of the most beautiful lyrics ever. You mm. know what I mean? For me, hip hop, um, it's, it's an energy that's the most powerful energy that we've experienced in our lifetime. It's just strongly misused. Before it was controlled, it had freedom. And mm. it was a lot like what we talk about with just black people in general. You saw positive black people. You saw negative black people. You saw all black people for who they were. And you, you, know, you didn't think that every black person you saw was bad or poor or whatever, right? <laughs> Once it got controlled by the major media and, and they started directing a thing, oh, y'all like this, huh? And, and start, it's like selling candy, you know what I mean? Candy tastes great. A piece of candy ain't going to kill you. You eat a piece of candy every now and again. But if you don't eat nothing but candy every day, you're going to get diabetes. You're going to die, you know right. what I'm saying? So the same thing with the music. It started getting to a point where they funneled into one type of music, one style of music, one type of message. No public enemy, uh, you know what I'm saying? None of the positive stuff, none of the just fun. Hey, we just, kid and play was just having fun, man. You know right. what I'm saying? And it was nothing wrong with it. Now it's like, if you're doing this, you're corny. If you ain't if you ain't sipping syrup, you're corny. If you don't smoke weed, you're corny. If you ain't got diamonds, you're corny. You ain't, everything is pointed to the worst of us. And it's expanded and highlighted as if this is, this is black culture. You know what I mean? And you can't be embraced if you don't embrace these things and it's so powerful that it's recycling, it's like the art imitates the life, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then the life imitates the art and it's, as you can, you constantly see it getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse because, you know, I was in the studio. I'm not going to say the rapper's name. I was in the studio with a rapper. We weren't working together, but he was, he talked about drinking lean. That's what he rap about. Right. So then when you hear his music, he rapping about that lifestyle so now you a kid, you know what I mean? And you like this rapper and you like, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. So then now you start drinking lean. Well, again, I think that goes back down to what's the programming before that, because no, I don't care how much you drink lean and, and I listen to it. Like, but some like, people, like there's somebody that's going to. But some people are so easily influenced. Like back to what you said about. Like school. Mm hmm. And not want to raise your hand because it was maybe it's not cool to answer the questions, or maybe they teased you for this. If you was that kid that was just super nerd, you know, and got mm -hmm. teased for being super smart, and you square, <clears throat> and you ain't got this, you see opportunity to think to make people think you something you not, and sometimes you do things to try to prove it. Like I've seen it over and over again. I've seen people I know 
that I'm like, you're not a tough guy. But everybody in the world think you a tough guy because mm-hmm. you project that because you're not a tough guy. So you did everything you thought tough guys should do. Right. You know, that the idea that men don't cry. Mm-hmm. Like, where did that come from that, mm-hmm. that we don't see that? Yeah, and when did that become weak? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? It's, but it's people out here, man, that they will, they best friend to die, bro. My best friend, supposedly, I say supposedly, I'm one, I, maybe I'm in denial. But my best friend supposedly killed himself, right? I cried so hard, bro. I felt like I died. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I've only felt this pain twice. <clears throat> this particular pain. Me and my wife, we uh, lost one of our, our daughters at birth in this. These mm. two situations. Boy, when I tell you, I, my my wife was concerned that I, I was like, I just was overwhelmed. You know what I mean? But But I never felt like crying made me less of a man. Mm. But I know people out here that a fight not there chuck it up yeah not to shed that tear because they don't want people to think they weak and so it's, when you go back to the music it's people that do stuff because the people they admire they think that's what's cool just because it's cool you know and they'll do it they'll and then they and then when they start doing it then they try to convince you it's not even about it ain't even about them no more they trying to and, and maybe it is about them but they don't realize it's about it's, it's them. It's always about you. You just don't have the awareness yeah. of how those breadcrumbs is leading you back to try yeah. to resolve something within yourself. Because like I said, like if no, the easily influence, I think that's, you know, that's leave it to the, the people who are psychologists. But if you start to see now that impulsiveness is trauma based, is poor programming, you're not easily influenced. You're just not connected to your purpose. There you go. I can see that, too. Because when you connect it to your purpose, you like. Nah, that leads me astray. But most people don't know their purpose. Exactly. Because your daughters, you taught them, you said you observed them, you saw their giftings. If you can point them to their gift, then you can find your purpose in that. Yes. And if you can find your purpose, then all of a sudden, um, yeah, it's hard to get you off. It's hard for people to get me off my square because I know where I'm going. Yeah. I got a full vision. Yeah. And it didn't start with like a full vision. It starts with a, a piece. Faith of a mustard mustard seed. Yep. Everything starts like a speck of dust. Mm-hmm. All the food we eat. Yeah. Human beings are sperm. What's the size of sperm, man? Like, <laughs> like, and it There's develops. Millions of them. It yeah. develops yeah. into this full thing. So we don't need to have the big picture in place. Right. We need to start with a small intention. And if we can leave with this one seed of if you don't do anything else, take care of yourself. Yes. But when it comes down to taking care of yourself, understand that that means something deeper than what you've been programmed to believe. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean, oh, well, go and um, get your hair done or your nails done and spa days. Like, what is your programming? Yeah. What is underneath there? What is it? That Ron believes. What is yeah. it that you want to believe, but everybody else is trying to push you off from believing? Yeah. What is that? Yeah. Go there. Yeah. Go into solitude. Get right with yourself. Get into therapy. Yeah. All forms of therapy. It's not just one. There's, right. I've done 60 different types of forms of alternative healing modalities and therapies. Wow. They're out there. Yeah. And keep going. Mm-hmm. You're going to continue getting slapped upside to the head. We're going to continue getting slapped upside the head. But I don't I don't want to make it seem like I'm not going to where I'm going because of somebody else. Because ain't nobody going to stop you if you know you want to If you know where you, you want to go. Win. Yeah, for sure. I think, man, you know, you play sports, right? Mm-hmm. I think, you know, to the parents out there when we start talking about the reprogramming, whether your kid is athletic or not, put them in a sport. Put them in something competitive, right? I think sports um I think sports helps us to learn how to lose. You know, I mm. think a big part of it is the people who struggle the most with failure, they struggle with it because they don't know how to overcome. And sports makes you learn real fast how to get over yourself. You know what I mean? You miss a bucket, okay, get back on defense, you know what I mean? Or you know, you miss a tackle, all right, you got to get them the next time or you lose a game. And you lose for the whole season, right? Because your team is trash. You're a kid. You're like, oh, we lost all season. But let's work harder 
to win next year, right? All right, mm -hmm. y'all, we lost this year. That's okay. We got time to grow. Like sports, I think, really teaches people a, a sense of healing that, that we may not get at home or we may not get um, doing art or anything else, you know. And, and those things be therapeutic. Art could be therapeutic. But I really want to encourage people to put – because I, I hear people sometimes say sports not important. You know, it's, it's a narrative going around now. It's like everything – everybody's a winner. Everybody gets a trophy. You know what I mean? You're not a winner if you're not winning. I if want you're, you If to... you're not winning, and, yeah. and that don't mean you're competing with someone to win. It's just winning means are you are you getting the things that you want yeah. in your life? Are you, te are you getting your goals? Are you setting a goal and achieving that goal? You know what I mean? Because you could be winning in one area of your life and be failing in the other, you know, simultaneously. Simultaneously. But yeah. what you what you got to learn how to do is the the principles, back to the principles, the principles you apply to winning in that one area, dial it back and apply those principles to the other area where you're losing, right? And like I said, I think, you know, as parents, we got to display that. You know, talk to your kids, man. Tell your kids about the successes. Tell your kids about the failures. Tell them where you messed up. You know what I mean? Even if you don't have kids and you mentor kids, tell people the whole truth. I know it's scary. You don't want people to think, oh, man, you did it. No, tell them the whole truth. Because I know personally from being around exceptionally wealthy people that I can tell you step by step what to do to get wealthy. And you can go do every single thing I told you and not get wealthy. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and the reason being is because... One, nothing is a straight line. Two, it wasn't the steps I did right that got you, got me to that place. It's the things that went wrong that pushed me to that place. It's the adjustments I had to make along the way. It was things that, you know, that's inside of you that you had to deal with and overcome. And every person don't have the same things to overcome. Everybody don't have the same struggles. Everybody don't have the same path. You know what I mean? David's path to success, Iran's path to success, two different things, two different methods, two different modalities. We might have the same end goal. It might be an exact same end goal. But your your GPS, your internal GPS tell you to go one way because maybe you live on the east side. And my mm -hmm. GPS tell me to go another way because I live on the west side. We're going to see different streets. We're going to... Mm -hmm. It's going to be different stop signs, different lights. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be different potholes, right? We got to, like, learn to get on our path, which you're talking about purpose, you know, and not deter from purpose. And we got to teach purpose. That's a I, Purpose over profits is how I figure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I figure if you know your purpose, you, you can't – you can live a great life and have no money, bro. Yeah. And have a great life. I, I don't make what people probably think I make. Nobody, I, I don't, I mean, people, I talk to people sometimes, they be like, it's funny, <laughs> you probably in these rooms too, I'd be around some like heavy hitters, you know, and they'll be like, yeah, we should go do this, uh, Ron, let's go do this, I'm like, yo, y'all know I ain't got the kind of money y'all got, right, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, they, and they laugh at me like, ha, 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 like, like I'm joking, but I'm dead serious, you know what I mean, but people, man, people think you're doing way better than you're doing. And I want to tell you, you could be on your last and do something monumental. You know what I mean? Like, you can do something really impactful. And don't look at little things you're doing as not being impactful. Don't look look at the lives that you affect. You know what I mean? Like, I heard Les Brown talk about one time. Uh, he talked it's two two different stories. But one was about being at your funeral. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, and imagine being at your own funeral. What do you want people to say about you? And if you can't think... If you're not doing things that's going to make people say those things, then that you need to change those actions immediately. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You don't want people to be at your funeral and be like, man, Ron borrowed $100 from me and never paid it back. <laughs> you know what I right. mean? He's a thief. You don't, you don't want those kind of stories. That was one story he told. The other story he told that I thought was impactful was he's talking about uh, a person being on their deathbed and they dying and they had all these dreams, all these gifts, talents, and, and those things were haunting them and saying, you never use me. You never, mm. you never, you never put this out. You never did this. You know what I mean? And it's like, don't die with all your gifts. Because these gifts and things are for the world. There was a, uh, Wayne Dyer has a quote that says, uh, don't die with your music still in you. Oh, that's dope. You know? Um, I've been probably doing all of this, again, go back 96, 97. I've been kind of in this space for a long time to the point where, 
if I walked away from it, I'd be okay. That's a beautiful thing. Because I gave, I, I gave, I did what I can do. Yeah. I've done, as I say, just today, up to today, I, 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 get, I did the best I could do with what I had. There you go. All the, you know, circumstances. I feel really good in my body. I got good health. Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm sad when I'm sad and I know how to get out of that sadness. I know how to move out of that depression. Yeah. That's where it's at to be able to regulate. Like we said at the top of the show, hey, there's some them, them peaks, but it ain't going to stay going up there. For sure. And then there's those valleys. And it ain't got to stay And it ain't going to stay down there either. Yeah. And it always was this quote. It ain't even a quote. It's a verse. It says, God will never give you more than you can bear. Yeah. And it's the truth. Yeah. Victor Frankl, man's search for meaning, hid out in dead bodies, his his family members' dead bodies to escape the Holocaust. Wow. There's people who have done, been through worse. Doesn't mean that that somehow um, invalidates what you've, you've gone, gone through. through. Yeah. It just lets you know that what they got out of, you can even out. though they were into. Yeah. So you may not get out of it. With a snap of a finger because right. you think things are linear and you think that this microwave generation creates microwave healing too yeah. or microwave deprogramming. Go watch The Matrix. That movie, that was a short little documentary, but look at that movie and yeah. look at Neo. That being 10 years worth of Neo. Yeah. 15 years worth of Neo. Yeah. And that's when you're able to break through the programming through consistent action. Yes. And that's the inner wealth. Inner wealth. Consistency. All right, guys. Until next time. La, 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 You've been la, listening to the la, Inner Wealth Podcast la, on EYL. La, la, la. If I can make tricks in Theme song produced by Be Ready for West Coast Creations. I am Raz Cass, reminding you to take action, be proactive, be congruent, get out of the matrix, get your mind right. We've automated mental health at inception. Join the movement. La 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 la. Inner wealth podcast. La la la. la. Inner wealth podcast. La la la. la. Inner wealth podcast. Inner wealth podcast.